Hello, this is Rob Jensen with Avant Guard College Prep Services. Welcome to um, the SAT Math, Math Strategies video of things. The purpose of this video is to really kind of give you an overview of some various strategies that may help you in uh, solving your problems. Uh, things that will help you along in maybe eliminating choices, things that will help you as well as um, uh, giving you options for which you may be able to proceed and how to solve the, uh, the question two of things. So. Uh, we're going to go through a few of these different strategies and uh, give you some insight on how you can better um, answer some additional questions you may not originally have gotten. So uh, one of the first things is the answer choices. And, and you know the answer choices can really give you a, a nice launching point or starting point of sorts. Um, if you are reading the question and you're having some difficulty and really trying to grasp what it's looking for or asking for, well, then glancing down into the answer choices um, can give you uh, maybe some insights of what you're looking for, how you should maybe develop the, your, your solution or something. And so by doing that, it can be good for um, getting you started. Uh, the other thing is uh, same difference. And so, uh, you know, be sure that with the answer choices that you're looking at them and understanding uh, and not making any careless errors of things. Sometimes the options are very similar where, you know, fractions might be inverse or something might be positive or negative or something of that matter. And, um, and it can be kind of, you know, uh, unfortunate, but, you know, it does happen where, you know, you're trying to go through as swiftly as you can. And then, you know, if the answer is negative three, but you answer positive three or something, or the answer is um, three fourths and you, and you answer and select four thirds or something. So it does happen. So just be very conscious of that as, you know, you're looking at the answer choices. The other thing is the answer choices can be quite good in, um, in helping you to eliminate uh, uh, questions and then or answer choices as well and stuff. So if you know that the answer is going to be a negative and they receive positive responses, and where you can go ahead and cross out all the positives or something, or if you know that um, by looking at it and uh, you know the value is going to be a fraction of some sorts and you see some whole numbers, well then eliminate the whole numbers and, and, and that. So you know we'll point that out as we go through the curriculum, but these are. Uh, a couple of good ways where you can help get yourself into a nice 50-50 um, uh, option of answer choices and, and letting you get down and uh, answering some more correctly. So just as for example here, we can see that uh, we got a graph over here and it says which following represents the relationship between H and C. And well, I can see that I have a graph that's been doing and I got a line that's charted across it to things. Well, and then I can look at the answer choice like, oh, okay, well, I'm here developing a um, a linear equation that's going to be in the slope intercept form the thing which is y equals mx plus b well one of the things i'm trying to look at when i'm first trying to identify and map out a line of things is i'm going to look at the y intercept well if i look at the y intercept here and it's at zero well, i can see it intersects with the value number five well the only two chance cho answer choices that have the, the b value is five is b and c of things and well so i can automatically just by looking at that one piece of information Eliminate A and D as our answer choices, and so I can, um, you know, go through that and uh, let's see if I can actually use my marker. Oh, there it is, right there. Let's let's try this out. I haven't really tried this before, so let's let's see about. This. Oh, I instantly went forward. So by doing that, I know it's not going to be either one of these. So I can um, then eliminate these answer choices here. Well, the next piece I need to figure out is what's going to be my, my M, my slope, per se, in which we have. Well, at first glance, I can see that, okay, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, which we know the slope is rise over 1. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3. So it's up 3 of things. So that's up 3. And then it goes over 1, 2, 3, 4 and such. Well, but under closer investigation of things, and, and this doesn't happen too often on the SAT, um, but we can see this really only goes over one value of one okay and so because of that now my 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 slope is going to be three over one all right and for that reason gives me the correct answer choice of c okay um, three over four so you can see if you aren't paying attention that much you're just counting these little these little um ax little minor axes here of things um, that you would then get B. Okay, 
So that's one way Ant's choice can help, you know, being able to glance down, I can see I'm developing an equation here, and then just as well as I know that I can help eliminate Ant's choice by finding my uh, y-intercept and my slope. All right, so the trial and error strategy is another one that you can use, and, and the use of this one is it's okay to be wrong when you're using this strategy. Um, you know, using the actual answer choices that are given to you to plug in and to see if it um, yields the correct answer of things. And so, um, and then just as well as there might be moments when the orientation of the uh, pro of the answer choices are in a high low to format, and, um, and it could be to your advantage by plugging in one and then trying to determine whether you need to go high or low with your answer choice and then effectively eliminating some of the other responses. So for instance, you know, if you look at this problem here, um, what I have x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0. Well, here I look and I see a quadratic equation solving for a, a root of x of things. But some of the students, you know, may not necessarily know that. But what you do know is we're, this is the x value here. And these are the answer choices that you can then take and place into that. And for that reason, if you're kind of stuck and if you need the additional help, then taking any one of these values and, and plugging it in, and for whichever one yields zero on this side of the equation, then you know is the correct answer choice. And things. So when you're always doing trial and error, you're always going to have at least, you're only going to have is, is one correct answer choice. And so if we used to go through that and say we try the, the answer value of C, the things we can pop that in, which is 6C with 6, getting that, and well, we can see that that does not equal each other. And so for that reason, C is not the correct answer of things. So I could try another one. And so if I try B per se, and popping B, and B was 3, and getting that. Um, no, I understand. So for that reason, um, you can see what we have here inserting the value get it, and we get 0 equals 0 so we know this is the correct answer choice we can circle B as our answer and move on um, here's another one I can look at it I can see what is the value of X for the equation of 2x squared plus 16x equals negative 32 so again we're working with another quadratic equation um, that's not in the standard form of things but you know again yeah, I, some people want to solve this the uh, traditional algebraic way of things, which is perfectly fine. And if you're most comfortable in doing that, and that's the fastest method for you just to move into and start solving it, so be it. But for others, if you find this to be a little bit more challenging, and you know you can get this right because we see that we have solving for x, again, we know any one of these values is x and has to be plugged into here. And so one of these answer choices has to be um, the right one. So we try C again, we plug in our value there, 4, and we can see but it does not equal to each other, so that is incorrect. And so let's try A this time. Try an A, plop an A in, working it out, as you can see, as we're going through and solving it, and um, we now get negative 32 equals 32. They are equivalent, so A is our answer choice um, for this particular example. So here's another, this is a good one for using um, high low on things. And so we can see that we got a low value here and then our high value. And just for your information, the values of this are going to be set up in this orientation almost all the time. Okay, it's very rare to see them not in some sort of low high orientation or high low orientation of things. That's just how they traditionally set them up. And this problem is saying the average of five numbers is 45. If the four of the numbers are 19, 20, 19, 48, and 65, what is the fifth number? So here we're doing solving for average. We're trying to do in this extrapolation of things, which you'll learn a little bit later on about this type of problem. And so we need to choose one of these values that will then uh, work for this. And so, so one of the things I may do is that I can see most of the numbers, and, and these are kind of, a little bit further off 45 so I doubt the number is going to be lower than 45 but let's just try 45 first and so by trying C with 45 we can add up all these values we get 197 divided by 5 so we get 39.4 so obviously that is too low of an answer choice for us of things 
Now, just going back, I want to kind of just show you something. So we determined that 45 is too low. So if 45 is too low, then I can strike that one off. I, I definitely know 42 is not it. And then I definitely know 38 is not it or things. And so for that reason, I know the answer choice has to be D, okay? It has to be because um, any of these other values are just going to yield smaller averages of things and doesn't necessarily bring us any closer to what we're trying to get, which is 45. So with trial and error and this variety, usually you only need to work it out at least once, maybe twice of things, and then that's all you have to do. For, so for instance, say, um, you know, if we was working out another problem, and I have my A, B, C, and D, and if I chose um, if I chose C as an answer choice and it didn't work, but I, it was too too high, okay, and then I would try B as the answer choice, which was still too high. And so if I know that B, C and B are too high, and I've, you know, and then you know eliminating them, you know, of course D would then be too high. Then I definitely know A is is the right answer choice. I don't have to work it out again. I've already eliminated these two, and this one I eliminated because I knew this one was too high already and such. And so that's kind of the point behind trial and error is that when you're doing trial and error, there should be no reason to work it out more than twice if you're using the, light, the low to high or high to low as you're um, helping to support your answer. And so we, we went through this, going through D, we can work it out and we see that yields 45, which again, I didn't have to work out because I already knew is, was our right, is our right answer choice. So uh, doing this in the backdoor strategy, uh, this one's really good for when, especially in section three, when you're working with some of that algebra and, and you may not feel as comfortable in, in solving some of those advanced equations such as like, you know, rational or radical equations or something, the things, but, um, and then maybe some of the more complex uh, quadratic equations. But, so this is, is a really good area for which you can utilize this strategy which I find to be some of the most useful opportunities. But the thing is, is does your problem have algebraic variables? It does, okay, do the answer choices have algebraic variables? And so if yes to both questions, then the back door is open for you to utilize this strategy. And so what you want to do is you want to make up a number for each variable. And then use the made up numbers to evaluate the original expression, okay, and yield an answer choice there. And then plug those um, made up numbers into each answer choice. And then that what that should do is yield the correct answer choice by matching up. And then um, you then being able to select that one as the, the proper one. So I think it's a little bit better if I try to show it. So let's go ahead and try to show it. And so for instance, I look at this problem and it says, which of the following expression is equal to the expression above? Now I look at this problem and I see I've got a rational equation because I see the variables are here in a fraction form. I already know on top is a difference of the squares and I know this is a quadratic equation that I can split into two binomials. However, you may look at it and you may not see that, but I see that. And so if you're saying, I, if you're looking at this problem and say, I don't know what to do, I don't know how to solve this. Well, you do know what to do. You can make up numbers to help break this down. And so by making up numbers, then we're looking for which one of these answer choices will then be equivalent in um, the number for which it yields. So just for this, I choose x equals 4. You know, making up when making up numbers, you want to make up numbers that are easily to manipulate in your own head. Okay, ones that you can, if you're having to take the square root of something, I'm not going to take the square root of 5 because it yields me some, you know, uh, decimal value that is not very easy for me to, to calculate. I want to use number 16 so it yields a 4 or something or number 4 because it yields a 2. But again, it's using values that you're very comfortable with. And so by plugging that in, I can see that um, 4, you know, 4 squared minus 8, so I get, you know, this. And so I end up with 749 sort of 1 seventh of things. And so uh, as my answer choice. And so what I'll be doing is looking to plug this value in on the answer choices. Here it yields a 7 on A. B yields 1 7th. Now to think about backdoor is that you have to work through all the problems. It's not like trial and error because trial and error is only going to have one correct answer. Backdoor, it's possible for you to have two correct answers. And so that's why you want to make sure. So you can see that B and C both yield the same correct answer and things. And D. So this part, you know, we eliminated A and D by making up a number. And so for when this happens, you then need to go make up a second number. 
And um, and I guarantee you, um, going through a makeup second number, there's I have barely I've only seen it maybe a couple times in my five years of doing test prep where there's been a, num a second number has yielded the same value. And so you can be rest assured if you choose a second number and you get it right, that's the one you move on with and don't have to work out both of them just in case. So working out, popping in five, I get the value of one fourth. I'm trying out B, yields one fourth since I know what I just said, this is the right one, circle B, move on and don't waste any more time, okay? And you can see C yields one eighth. So here's another example you might be able to do this. And this is another one that you could see quite easily in section three. You're having to manipulate this uh, radical fraction of sorts. And, and again, you want to choose values that are going to be very comfortable for you to manipulate things. Um, and so you can choose x equals 16. Again, yields a very nice number four. And then four um, is n of things. And so if I end up having one fourth to the fourth power, I know that's going to yield a fraction or a decimal. Okay, it's going to be a very small number. Uh, this problem most likely resides in section three, so you probably will not be able to calculate this decimal value. But just looking at this, you know that um, this is going to be a decimal. Okay, and so by working them out, I can see I get sixteen four over two or sixteen squared. I know that's going to be a big value. Okay, may not be able to calculate two fifty six, but I know sixteen squared is a big value. So definitely not it. Now I end up doing this, I get 16 to the negative two. Well, guess what? 16, that in, is in the uh, inverse is into one over 16 squared. May not be able to calculate this decimal, but I know that's gonna be a small value. Do this one. I know 16, four to the fifth power, 4.5 power, definitely gonna yield a big number. D, 16, 3.5 power, definitely gonna yield a big number. Of things so I know with all just looking at these values here of things that B is the right answer choice and I really don't have to even calculate them in a you know on a, in my calculator so well that is the uh, conclusion of our math strategies video um, you know I hope that you utilize these in the practice for what you do um, the practice problems you do especially the homework is a phenomenal time to try to implement these and become more comfortable and not only trying to solve it in the the algebraic and the correct mathematical way which we'll, we'll spend a lot of time on but you know we we'll also try to spend some time trying to be more versatile in ways and being more versatile gives you the opportunity um, to either one if you see a problem and you know you can solve it both algebraically and then through one of the shortcuts that you can be flexible on which on which which is quicker or two you can be more comfortable in knowing that if you come across a problem that you don't really understand you've you've read the question you've looked at the answer choices of things you're still not sure how to proceed in the proper way and so you can say can i do trial and error can i do backdoor which allow you to maybe just answer maybe two or three more problems in a test but you know those two or three problems can add up to another 20 30 points and that's already to the gains for which you're building in your knowledge base as well and stuff so um, I hope you find this useful. Uh, we'll continue to work on this as we go through the uh, curriculum of things, but uh, thank you so much and best of luck.